Star Wars Outlaws has released on GeForce Now sometime after early access. Some might have been really looking forward to playing the game on day one on the platform, but got disappointed because it wasn't available. The game even notes that the game will be streamable on the platform itself. But I think I know why it took so long. Let me explain. Now let's put your feelings aside about how you feel about the game. I just wanted to talk about the graphic settings for it. And yes, I was really surprised how many graphical technologies they put into this game. I mean, look at Kay. She's like picture perfect. Stop it. Get some help. I mean, really guys, they nailed the look from the actress. I mean, nailed her. Don't do drugs. Jesus Christ. Time to go, Kay. For good. Now, all joking aside, guys, I think the real problem is that they used the Snowdrop engine for this game. This engine was first introduced with the first Division game back in 2013. I think it's time to upgrade, and I don't really care how upgraded this engine is. But there's also that rumor that they made her this way on purpose. Damn! I'm getting way off topic here. This video is about the graphic settings and not a real critique of how the game plays or what I really think of it. I've only really got about two hours into the game, plus that's not what we do here. You're not getting in, Kay. Club's already got enough rats. <laughs> really funny. Okay, okay, enough with the roast. But I am still pretty shocked with all the options they have here. So much so that I don't think NVIDIA had enough time to set recommended settings when they launched the game. This is why I think it took them so long. With the ultimate tier here at 4K, I'm hitting a 60 FPS average when I first start the game. I'll go through all of this and show you my recommendation for 120 FPS at 4K. Feel free to customize on your own. So first things first, I'll be testing in the center of town here. It's not the best spot as you'll see, but it'll do for now. GeForce Now sets us to the Ultra preset right off the bat. Now the first thing that caught my eye was this NVIDIA RTX Direct Lighting feature. This was interesting because ray tracing effects are already turned on in the advanced settings as you can see here. Now if you turn the Direct Lighting feature on, it will tank your FPS. And to be honest, I didn't notice too much of a visual difference, but of course the lighting in this area isn't that great. Now let's get this FPS to a 120 FPS average. So if you go to the video options, note that the game puts the screen to a 21 by 9 cinematic mode by default for that classic movie look. George Lucas would be proud. Eh, probably not. But they also have a full screen setting, and this is actually more demanding on the system because of the extra pixels on the screen. So make sure you're aware of that. Now let's go to upscaling because we need it. We'll go with DLSS of course, but FSR is there for older builds. And this game not only supports frame generation, but also ray reconstruction. Is this the new cyberpunk? How dare you? Well, don't count it out yet. Check this out. I set things to ultra, ray reconstruction on, and activated RTX direct lighting, and we're back to 8-bit gaming. The 90s called, it wants its frame rate back. So yes, there are major modifications to be made to get this where we want. The first question you need to ask yourself is whether you want to play with the RTX Direct Lighting or not. It is possible, but the settings will be significantly different. Let's start with Direct Lighting on first. So just setting DLSS maxed out to performance and turning frame generation on will make a huge difference. It's like a whole new game. So to balance out the graphics and the RTX lighting, we'll have to make compromises with both to hit 120 FPS. Turn Direct Lighting to low and turn the graphics preset to medium. And ladies and genitals, this is how you hit 120 FPS at 4K with RTX Direct Lighting on. Is it worth it? Well, I really need to get farther in the game to answer that question. It would really help if they had an attractive female as the lead. Maybe like this chick. Just a thought, maybe I'm just stupid. Back at the task at hand, what about without direct lighting? Well, you can be a bit more liberal with the settings. Direct lighting really hit the FPS hard and that's not something we have to worry about now. Now I do change my display to cinematic view because I want the full Star Wars experience. You don't have to though. Graphic settings to ultra and DLSS set to balanced will give you that FPS sweet spot. And you're probably wondering if this works elsewhere. It does. These settings are pretty solid for as much as I played. 
Enjoy the view, Nix. One way or another, it's the last time we're gonna see it. Let me know your experiences in the comments below. What's that? You're not gonna play this game? I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. Well, before I go, I just wanted to mention that this also has HDR support for those who are really into HDR. You know who you are. And last but not least, this MSI Mystic Light setting is for MSI Mystic Light products. I have no idea if it even works with GeForce Now. So if you like this overview of the graphics settings for Star Wars Outlaws, give us a like. And seriously guys, feel free to give this game a try. Not the best, it's not the worst. Just look at it as Tomb Raider in space, without the hottie. Let me know what you guys think about this style of video. Also, make sure to join as a member of the channel or join our Patreon and our Discord links below. And above all else, make sure to subscribe to keep it locked right here at the only place where you can do battle in gaming heaven, Cloud Gaming Battle. I'll, I'll come back. No, you won't.